Trust in the police is an essential part of a just and democratic society. Where there is abuse of police powers for personal gain, there is corruption. Where there is police corruption, there can hardly ever be justice. Thursday, 28 December 2012, and I had just returned from one of the most disappointing holidays of my entire student's life. I had only travelled home from abroad to witness for myself the level to which corruption had risen in this country. Unfortunately, this is the story of my country. My country. This notoriously corrupt country called Cameroon. One of the most corrupt countries on the face of the earth. This documentary is meant to be the report of an undercover investigation carried out between November and December 2012, exposing a seriously corrupt police network at the level of the Delegation for National Security in Cameroon. The report exposes some of the illegal and corrupt practices engaged in by members of the Cameroonian Police Force at the Delegation for National Security in Cameroon, in the capital city of Cameroon called Yaoundé. It looks at police and public involvement in bribery and corruption, specifically around the application and issuance of passports to Cameroonian citizens. Officially the Republic of Cameroon, Cameroon is about two times the size of the United Kingdom, occupying about 475,000 square kilometer land area in the west of Africa. It is often termed Africa in miniature and has so much to offer. In Cameroon we love football. And for me, I am yet to find any Cameroonian who wasn't only impressed but so proud of being Cameroonian when our junior football squad won the championship of the World Football Olympic Finals of the year 2000 in Sydney, Australia. Since then, so many Cameroonian soccer athletes have grown to world-class prominence. Cameroon has a wonderful climate, a rich vegetation and natural resources. Cameroonian exports are countless, including cocoa, coffee, cotton, petroleum, timber, bananas, palm oil, and what have you. As if that is not enough, Cameroon has one of the highest literacy rates in the whole of Africa. Anybody in his right senses, I guess, will by virtue of all these positive attributes, immediately interpret this to mean prosperity and a better livelihood for so many Cameroonians. But that is far from the truth. Very, very far. Not least because with a population of just over 20 million inhabitants, the life expectancy at birth in Cameroon is one of the lowest in the world and was just over 55 years in 2012. The causes are so many, but in all this demonstrates a low quality of life for so many Cameroonian families. Health-wise, for example, there is a constant recurrence of many tropical parasitic and viral diseases in the country. This is further worsened by the low quality of healthcare in Cameroon. But that is not all because there is an even greater problem plaguing this country. Because Cameroonian citizens, philanthropic and civil society organizations, news corporations, Transparency International, etc. will all testify that this country's progress is greatly hampered by a level of corruption that is among the highest in the world. Currently still one of the most corrupt countries in the world, this country made world news headlines in the years 1997 and 1998 when it was rated the most corrupt country in the whole wide world. How disheartening. Well, for most of us Cameroonians in the diaspora, they may not be an issue anymore. But for most of us who are back home and every day have to put up with this unfortunate situation permitted by our government and the leader of our country, it is an issue. Yes, it is. Because it is a life of hardship, of great pain, long suffering, fear, and injustice. The status quo is not right, and often we may have valid fears for not speaking out and exposing these ills given the reputation of our system and its history of repression, but if, if the truth will help alleviate this situation, then we have no choice but to go by it. Up until now my greatest target has been the Cameroonian police force, because as you might already know in Cameroon, the police remain a burning furnace of corruption. In this documentary, I look at their role in promoting such illegal practices at the General Delegation for National Security in Cameroon. 
Now if you own a Cameroon passport then you should be able to find the abbreviation DGSN which in French means Délégation Générale pour la Sûreté Nationale. That is to say that this delegation actually issued your Cameroonian passport. It is indeed the main body that manages and makes decisions on passport applications from Cameroonian citizens at home and abroad. It is thus quite an important delegation within the Cameroonian government. To further demonstrate its importance, the Delegation for National Security was by Decree Number 098-273 of October 22, 1998, made one of the attached services to the Presidency of the Republic of Cameroon. Now you've heard all this, but let's put this into perspective. This is my story. I just noticed my Cameroon passport expired late 2012 and went to the Cameroon Embassy in London for a renewal. At the Cameroon Embassy in London, I was told this is not possible and that all I could do was get a completely new passport. That was very surprising. But however, because I intended on traveling to Cameroon in about a fortnight, they advised that I simply do this while I get home, claiming it wouldn't take long to get a new passport there. They also specified that I do it in Yaoundé, that is the capital of Cameroon. So I was given a document popularly called laissez passer to enable me enter Cameroon. Now before I left the UK, I also decided to find out more from other Koreans in London who had applied for a passport in Yaoundé before. Interestingly, when I asked about the cost, the general response was that it depends on the length of time I intended to wait. In other words, it depends on who you meet and how much money you got to spend because the lesser you pay, the longer you have to wait to get your new passport. Oh wait a minute, hang on. I would have thought there would be a standard cost and procedure for passport applications. This is a right for every Cameroonian. And this shouldn't depend on the amount of money one has, not least because of the wide gap between the rich and the poor in this country. I found this quite unfair and very disturbing, as it reminded me of the corruption in my country. Well, all this was by word of mouth. But having lived in Cameroon for many years and knowing what this country, the government, the police and the delegation for national security just like any other institution the country can be up to, I believed them. In any case, because I hadn't had first-hand experience of this sort of unfairness myself, this prompted me to carry out this undercover investigation by trying to apply for my own passport in Cameroon. My flight from the UK safely made it to Cameroon. I finally made it to the outskirts in Yao. I then made my way to the heart of the capital city in a taxi. Now each time I got into a taxi or walked around in the capital city, I tried to gather public opinion on this issue and information on how much it may cost me to get my new passport. Thank you. 
se le pasó. No. Je veux demain, mais ce que je veux seulement savoir, tu vois, non, comment ça marche. Tu veux faire le demain Oui, je veux faire demain, mais. Tu veux faire pour combien Je peux faire pour le 100 000. 150, 150, c'est pas mal, mais. Je veux, je, je, je veux seulement être sûr que. Tu vois, non, que je, je veux avoir ça. So the number of people come how long? Three months. Yeah. Wow, that's we pay sixty back. Ah, mais c'est un peu plus de You may have noticed, members of the general public responded very differently, especially to the question of how much they actually had to pay for their passport applications. Amounts such as 50,000, 51,000, 52,000, 58,000, 100,000 CFA, 150,000 CFA, 250,000 CFA, 500,000 CFA were all mentioned. Also in some cases people often claim to have someone within the police force or a member of the public that would help them get a new passport for a certain price at a certain time. So I decided to go to Delegation for National Security myself. At the delegation, I met many members of the police force and guards and I had two major questions in mind. The first being whether there is a notice board anywhere within the delegation with information to guide me with my passport application. The second being what the actual cost of my application would be. Here are my conversations with the officials. Bonjour. Oui. Euh, je veux savoir si on fait le passeport. Oui. On fait le passeport. Oui. Euh, donc, euh, je veux savoir seulement les exigences. Il y a un tableau d'affichage. Oui. Il n'y a pas. Photocopie carte d'identité. Légalisé. Oui. Une photocopie acte de naissance. L'autre légalisé, l'autre non légalisé. Ok. Ah. Il y a Okay. 
Mais il y a un document. Il n'y a pas. Vous avez quarantaine et pas de sport, vous avez conduit les cartes de Ok. Ça va, je vais. Comment ça va, non Parce que je peux dire quelque chose. Mais on peut essayer ici à la gare. C'est comme ça. Il n'y a pas de sang. Tu veux même faire des choses On peut aller voir quelqu'un. Ah, il y a quelqu'un dedans qui peut. Oui. So at the end of the day, I was told that there was neither a notice board nor a notice document listing the requirements I would need to include in my passport application. All the members of the police force I met there, including a receptionist who seemed to be an inspector of police, all gave me the requirements by word of mouth and requested 50,000 CFA or 100,000 CFA or that's 150,000 CFA if I needed my passport urgently. I wasn't happy with such inconsistencies because I had to return back to school to continue my studies within a given deadline. I was now faced with the possibility to lose up to 500,000 CFA to get a new Caribbean passport. I now went back to the first police official I met. I mean the inspector of police I met at the reception. For the purpose of this documentary and to protect his ID, I will call him Sam. Sam had two stars on his epaulet, implying he's likely to be an inspector of police. Sam had clearly asked me for 150,000 before and that it would take me only 5 days to get my new passport.